there were a few of us from Richmond, and that included Marilyn Langlois, who's here, and myself, and Paul Kilkenny, who's right up at front here, who um, is my husband. And uh, we three had an opportunity to join others to go on this wonderful trip to experience the worker-owned cooperatives of Mondragon, Spain. We went there in September, and we viewed this network of cooperatives that is 56 years old, and it's uh, the network altogether is called the Mondragon Cooperative Corporation, and they are the seventh wealthiest business in Spain, which is really phenomenal. Um, it's 56 years old, but more important that them, than them being the seventh wealthiest um, business in Spain is the fact that it, um, it really sets an example to all of us on how we can expand as a community and develop a sense of um, democracy and empowerment. Um, and in many ways, we are very ripe in Richmond for such an economic strategy. We are already steering our own destiny in Richmond. We have made fabulous progress um, in things like social justice, environmental justi justice, economic equity, fair taxation. We have the wealthiest um, you know, profit-based cooperative in, in Richmond. Um, the, uh, a uh, proper profit-based corporation in Richmond. Did I say that right? Yeah. Second time now? It's not a corporation. Corporation. <laughs> we know it's a corporation. And that's the Chevron um, um, Richmond oil refinery. And we got them to pay their, you know, a, a really substantial share of taxes, additional taxes to Richmond. So we're very, very proud of the values that we set forward and the implementation of those values. And so our values in Richmond are very much in sync with the values of Mondragon. Um, we've already stated that we, um, we have goals of financial health, social well-being, education and training and innovation. So one thing that we did at the end of this trip, and you'll hear about this trip in detail, Marilyn will be giving us a um, PowerPoint presentation that she put together, which is really a fabulous accounting of our trip. Um, one of the things at the end of this trip was that myself and Mikhail uh, Lesamis, who is the Director of um, Cooperative Dissemination in Mondragon, uh, he and I signed this letter of intent and endorsement, and I think it's on um, one of these handouts there, that shows that we have an interest in facilitating the collaboration between the cooperatives in Mondragon and potential cooperatives in Richmond. And uh, we most definitely have that potential, as I said before, in Richmond. We have a rich history of cooperatives in the Bay Area and throughout the US, and much to learn from them. So I just want to take a moment to share some of the things, some of the networking that we've done since we've come back from Spain to kind of, you know, really connect with others who are, have this similar interest. So myself and my staff met with Ted Howard, who is a key figure with the Evergreen Cooperatives in Cleveland, and they are having great success out there in Cleveland. We also met with Michelle McGoy of Solar Richmond, who is deeply interested in uh, solar and turning Solar Richmond into a worker-owned cooperatives. My staff had a meeting with the California Center for Cooperative Development, who are working with some former uh, LEAP students. LEAP is an organization we have in Richmond under the library. And these former students, uh, LEAP students in Richmond, are starting a food service cooperative. We have connections with the Mandela Food Co-op in West Oakland. Mariella uh, Cedeno is on our trip to Mondragon. And Dana is here tonight, who's also with the um, 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 Mandela Food Co-op. And Thomas Mills, I don't think Thomas is here. He'll probably be at the other one. He's with Richmond's Economic Development Department is also um, um, help working on helping get this started. And he, um, he worked on helping get the Mandela Co-op started. Uh, also, Mariella has invited us, as has Dana, in, uh, to come for a tour of the Mandela Co-op and learn more. Terry Baird, I don't know if Terry is here tonight. Terry is here is a Richmond resident who is a founding member of the Arismendi Bakery in Oakland, uh, Emeryville, and so we're glad uh, Terry could make it tonight. Miguel Espino uh, and some Richmond residents want to do an urban agriculture cooperative, cooperative um, in greenhouses with hydroponics. So 
so that's another um, effort we have that we can work on. Brian Drayton of uh, Richmond Spokes is interested in a bike co-op, and um, David uh, Strain. Strain. David Strain is here today. Um, he's all works with Brian and is very interested in advancing that. So many, many have really shown an interest in various enterprises, uh, too many to name. Um, another point is that we had a recent community meeting of the Healthy Richmond Collaborative funded by the California Endowment. That's uh, a big project we have here in Richmond. And the workshop on economic development and job creation touched on cooperatives as an important uh, strategy. So um, just a note that cooperatives are really more prevalent than you might think. Uh, credit unions are cooperatives, consumer grocery and uh, retail cooperatives exist, like REI is a consumer uh, co-op, and Atchison Village, and I think we have someone, we have Sylvia from Atchison, I don't know if we have anyone else here from Atchison, uh, is a housing co-op in Richmond. So they're, they're out there and we want to keep expanding them. So I'm really excited to share with you some of the experiences we had in Mondragon. And Marilyn will guide us through a wonderful PowerPoint. Um, I do want to state that the spirit and inspiration that we received and that we uh, were enriched by in Mondragon was wonderful. But in no way does it diminish the spirit and inspiration that we have to offer here in Richmond. So we have so much to offer to Mondragon as we learn and expand on our potential. And I want to end with um, a quote by Jose Arismendi, who is um, who was the, the priest who got these cooperatives going in, in Mondragon, Spain. And he made so many wonderful quotes, but this is a very short one. To live is to walk ahead without retreating. And that's exactly what we're doing in Richmond. So I want us all to um, enjoy this presentation. There will be time for questions and comments at the end. And uh, I look forward to really advancing this idea um, you know, and having you all um, play a role and helping us move forward in the sense of cooperation and empowerment so that we can advance as a community. So thank you. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Marilyn Ringless. this nice, warm uh, Richmond evening, summer evening in October. Um, yes, it was, it was quite a pleasure to, um, and an honor to be able to go on this uh, delegation that was organized by the Praxis Peace Institute of Sonoma. There were 25 of us that traveled to uh, Mondragon, uh, Spain. As you can see from the first slide, um, Arasate is actually this, the name of the town in Basque. It's a it's within the Basque region of Spain, and the people there speak both Basque and Spanish. And in the photograph, you can see the whole area. Uh, the town itself is down in the valley behind those trees. And on the right side, you can kind of see, do you see a couple buildings there? Um, off to the right, those are the corporate headquarters and the, uh, the, the Mondragon Bank, uh, Caja Laboral. That's their location right there. So it's a, it's a pretty spectacular setting. But before we talk about what we actually did on the trip, I want to step back and share with you sort of the context in which um, the Mondragon cooperatives emerged. So, next slide, please. Um, some of you, I think, are perhaps familiar with Pablo Picasso's uh, painting, uh, Guernica. Um, the town of Guernica is very near Mondragon in the Basque region. And we, we were able to go there uh, one evening and saw this replica of Picasso's painting, which depicts the, it's, it was a really horrific <coughs> bombing. It was like a carpet bombing of the town um, of Guernica in 1937 during the Spanish Civil War uh, by German forces who were allied with Franco's fascist, um, fascist uh, forces. And um, that was just one example of the devastation that occurred in the region. So coming out of the Spanish Civil War, there was a great deal of poverty and devastation and despair. Um, in the 40s, enter, next slide, uh, a, a young priest, Jose Maria, his full last name is Arismendi Arieta, and he was assigned to the town of Mondragon, 
and he was part of the Catholic social mission, uh, mission and he really had a, a strong vision for how this you know, community could bring itself up and, uh, and uplift itself out of the poverty and unemployment and despair it was experiencing. Please, um, I think there's some more chairs. There's a few chairs. Oh, there's a couple chairs up front. Somebody wants to come up front, please do so. And um, so the first thing he did was not to help start a cooperative. The very first thing he did in 1943 was to start a um, polytechnic school, um, recognizing that really education and training has to undergird any of these types of enterprises. So for several years, uh, the Polytechnic School was training a lot of people in various engineering skills so that they could, you know, start some of the industries that were to follow. Let's go to the next slide. And this was one of the one of the quotes um, that we made, which we heard throughout our seminar. If you want to democratize power, you have to share the knowledge. And um, that was definitely an underlying theme throughout. There's so much emphasis on education, training, um, uh, innovation, research, and constantly adjusting to new uh, circumstances. And sharing the knowledge, sharing the resources, sharing the information. Uh, the next slide. This is tells you what the mission of the Mondragon Cooperatives were. They were founded, the first one was founded in 1956. Um, by five men who had finished the completed the polytechnic school, they got together and started a small co-op that made uh, small kerosene cookers, very very low key, and it just kind of took off from there. They expanded into other products and other markets, and very soon afterwards, they also started a bank, a credit union bank called Caja Laboral, which um, enabled uh, gave a mechanism to provide funding for establishing new uh, cooperatives as, as they, they grew. But you can see that the mission is um, an entrepreneurial socioeconomic entity with deep cultural roots in the Basque country, created by and for the people, inspired by the basic principles of our cooperative experience, committed to the community, to the improvement of competitiveness, and to the satisfaction of customers, to create wealth within society, to entrepreneurial development and job creation, preferably in membership jo membership jobs in cooperatives. And then there's more. Furthermore, um, the Mondragon Cooperative Corporation is based on a commitment to solidarity and uses democratic methods for its organization and management. It encourages the participation. Participation is a huge, huge word and huge concept. concept. And integration of people in management, profits, and ownership of their companies to develop a joint harmonizing project aimed at social, business, and personal development. Um, so started with one small co-op in 1956 and rapidly grew. Um, today, there are a total of 120, it's a network of a total of 120 um, autonomous cooperatives. 87 of them are industrial, and they make everything from uh, uh, washing machines, refrigerators, camping equipment, bicycles, elevators, there's a construction company, uh, home furnishings, um, car parts, medical equipment, all kinds of things. The credit cooperative is the bank, the Caja Laboral. Consumer is a huge retail chain uh, that um, is a grocery, uh, sells groceries and also household um, goods and clothing all over Spain. There are four agricultural co-ops, eight education co-ops, including a K-12 school, public school, a university, um, several technical schools and research centers. Uh, well, the research centers are a separate category, but there's several of those for research, innovation, um, developing new, new products and new ideas, and then services. These are a variety of uh, various technical administrative services, including a, a business incubator. So there are 120 altogether. And this just shows you, um, this, these are some slides I got when we were there. They gave us, when we left, a CD with all kinds of PowerPoint presentations that they give at various points. So I picked some of them to show you. You can see in the center is their industrial group and the various sectors that they are active in. On either side, the financial group, the retail uh, chain group, and then the fundamental basis is the training and research centers, and at the top you see those are <coughs> some of the governing structures, which are of course completely representative of the workers. It's complete one worker, one vote uh, philosophy of 
democracy in the workplace. So that's how the decisions are made. 